All right, so it's five minutes after eight now, and we'll start. First of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Tiwa. I'm also I'm a product designer, and I'm one of the core team members of Design with EU. Design with EU is a weekly series. Um, we hold it every Sunday by 8 p.m. on Google Meet. And what we do is we bring um, in experienced designers in different parts of design to share their knowledge with us. We've been doing this for a while. We've been doing this since November last year, and we have a couple of recorded sessions. So if you are joining us for the first time and you like to get to know, you know, all the people that we have brought and, you know, learn from them, you can go to our YouTube channel. The name of our YouTube channel is Design with EU. You can go there after the session and watch our recorded um, sessions, right? So today, um, we have Victor Onazi. Victor Onazi is a product designer based in Lagos, Nigeria. He is focused on solving problems by creating meaningful experiences through design and development. Um, Victor currently works with Number, formerly known as Kudi. Um, I would allow um, Victor to just introduce himself better and then move over to the topic that we have for today, which is working with colors. Victor, over to you. Yeah, thanks so much, Tiwa. Can you hear me? Just to be sure. Yes, yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So first of all, I'll say thank you for this opportunity to be here. And I'm, <laughs> I'm honored really here, but thanks for the opportunity for hosting me. I'm hoping to share the knowledge I have with the rest of everybody. So yeah, like Tiwa said, my name is Victor Onazi. I'm a product designer based in Lagos, Nigeria. I currently work at Number. Yeah, Number just offer financial services to, to people, both business banking and agent banking. Yeah. So that's all basically do at Number. And apart from design, I listen to a lot of music. I just I just listen to music because it helps me mentally and helps me grow. Yeah, and yeah, hoping to go over the topic right now. I don't know whether Tiwa will stop sharing so I could share. So, okay, that's perfect. Thanks so much, Tiwa. You're welcome. Yeah, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay. <sighs> so yeah, we're talking about working with colors. I mean, colors, 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 colors. Colors have been like an interesting topic so far, yeah. Because I remember early in my days, colors is one of the, the difficult, and one of the hardest thing to learn, because it's one of the basic, but one of the hardest things to learn as well so i'll just be walking through and teaching everybody about how to work with colors basically and hoping this section will be helpful and impactful yeah like where you said um victor currently a pro designer i work at number i listen to a lot of music and i love enjoyment so in case you want to sponsor me I'm available for enjoyment, so <laughs> yeah. So this is the overview. So this is like just a breakdown of what we'll be talking about today. It's just pretty, not really much, but I feel like less is more. And just having stuff straight to the point for other people to actually understand everything will work perfectly for everyone. And we're talking about the introduction of colors, how color, 
how to work with colors, practical section, um, you do questions and answers, then I believe this will definitely help. I know. So over to it, color or colors. <laughs> so I know I'm sharing my screen now. I might not really see anybody I know, but which which one is the right spelling? <laughs> is it color or both of them are right? I know we are very sure that one is one is English and the other one is British. I know so, but we have decided to stick with the the British type because we were colonized by those guys. And so, but yeah, basically they are the same thing in terms of pronunciation, in terms of what they mean. I know just the spelling that changes. But yeah, let's not talk about colors. Yeah, what is color basically? So color like. It's it's beyond it's beyond what you see. I mean, colors trigger a lot of things, and color is the appearance of the thing that give results in way it's it. So basically, like I said, color is color is the appearance of a thing that gives results in the way it reflects. So. Obviously, color first of all stands for appearance, and you can also see the fact that results and as well the way it reflects, because all this basically works together. And color basically have like an impact in whatever you do, whatsoever if you are telling the story, if you are doing whatsoever, because you come to a situation whereby. Even though you're in traffic lights, you're in your very corner, you can't want to see that red, it triggers a lot of things in your head. I mean, this is telling you to stop. And color, color basically speaks to you. So it's more like an appearance of a thing that gives results in a way it reflects. So it gives results basically and all. So just to be sure, I don't know if you can see here, Mitiwa. Yes, yes, we can. Okay, yeah, thank you. You so much so yeah color is an integral part of communication i mean color communicates like i said you, you bring the traffic moving your vehicle and you're in the traffic like and you see the color red you have to stop and this basically is communicating to you and color is just beyond having an interface i mean it can be different things can bring can bring everything you you basically see. You can look you look at pictures, you see different shades of color on it, and it basically speaks to you and all. So there's this communication that colors gives out to people, and color is basically it's an integral part of communication. And I guess that point was really clear. So I guess this is like a medium post I took this form. So color is a Color is an instrument. Color is instrumental in how we perceive the world. Uh, I mean, when you see red, comes to your head danger. When you see green, I mean go. Or when you see blue, be informative. Like this, basically, this basic stuff. Just, just think around how you perceive the world and how you think around the world generally. Because it still boils down to communication. The fact that color basically just does all this stuff and it's it, it's very very much much easier to to see a particular color and define what this particular thing is trying to say i know and sometimes you might get lost because there might be some miscommunication i mean you might be designing an user interface now and color might not probably work for that particular problem you are working on and it will be like a miscommunication and you get to lose thousands of users on just that particular UX problem per se, because the user experience matters as well when dealing with colors. So colors draws your eye to invoke emotion and communicate to you. I mean, it's drawing your eye, like it draws your attention. Like you're trying to enter a particular login field and you, you get this particular error message that says, Yes, that this password is incorrect. Just imagine that error message is in the same color. We probably like the label color 
and all. Like, there is this error that you, there is this feeling that you will not even get that. Yes, what 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 is this trying to communicate? But when you have your your error message probably in red, like it pops up to your eye, it draws your attention, it invokes this particular communication. And just make sure that yes, so this is what I'm trying to communicate, and I'm trying to stay regardless. No. Yeah, I know now you know it. Yeah, you know what color is, you know what color basically does. And one thing from somewhere what I just said now, one thing I would just like to emphasize you know, just the color communicates. Color communicates, I mean, no matter the color you use, no matter the thing you do, I mean, color communicates to you. And you must be very sure before you make very you use before you use any other color. Yeah. So now, before you choose a color palette, so there are a lot of things to consider before you're doing this. And it's something I've really worked with and that's really helped me it's personally. I, I believe it should help a lot of people here as well because this basically has helped me. Because color has been like the most difficult thing. And people actually think, think it's really hard. And it's hard, yeah. It's not like hard, hard, but it's hard because it's one of the basics that you master. I mean, in terms of product design, in terms of brand design, all these basics are merged up into one to actually define a particular solution. You know, and color is one of the fundamental basics that you must understand. And before you like, go ahead to choose a color palette, you must at least make sure you meet some certain criteria in whatever you are basically doing. So ask yourself, so basically like tons of questions you have to ask yourself. And yeah, but these are like few few of the questions that, few of the questions that I have in mind that I basically do ask myself, like what is the message of the design? Like trying to say what, what message? What message is my design trying to pass, and what exactly will my product basically communicate? Yeah, as a product designer, yeah, I'm working on a particular product. I know that yes, yeah, so what? Like like I said, number is a fintech space, and there are a whole, whole lot of fintech space. Just take for assumption, I take like an online geek, or probably I take like a side geek, and I want to really define what color they should be used and all. Imagine a situation whereby the client has no idea of whatsoever the color should be and all. So, but probably he wants to build a FinTech app and all. So one thing I come to my mind, I ask myself these various questions, like what is the message this design is trying to pass? I mean, I'm trying to design a FinTech. I'm trying to make people trust me. I'm trying to understand that, yes, so there are some people that can actually look at my product and I want to stick to it. So what what are the what are the message and what message am I trying to pass on? And one thing I want one thing I understand from this is that choosing the right color, understanding the message first will actually help you define the rest of it for from the long run and all. So for example, like a fintech, we all know that blue is one thing that's versatile in the fintech industry. And Blue basically stands for trust. And when you see blue, there's this trust, there's this calmness and all. I and mean, Gen Z, Gen Z people know, know this a lot. I mean, we have carry wise that use blue a lot. And this basically helps them to basically define the trust. Like you can actually trust in, in saving your money and all. So these are like, these are like, okay, well, I'm going for blue because Yes, that is the message I'm trying to pass to people. I'm trying to pass the message of people should trust me and all. So yeah. So what emotion? The other question is what emotion do you want your design to invoke? What emotion? What what do you want to trigger? It still boils down to what message you're, you're trying to pass. You want people to trust your product. You want people to know basically for fintech and all. There are a whole lot of more and. It just these are like stuff I ask myself basically. 
and identify your audience and know who you are designing for. So there's this thing that I was reading online. I guess it was like a medium post I read and it got me to understand some things about colors. And I feel I feel sharing it here would actually help. I mean, identifying your audience is beyond just knowing who you are designing for. It's beyond like knowing the, the cultural background, who the people, what their interest falls in and all. Like this still define this still boils down to when you are certain to choose clothes and all. So identify your audience. We all know that in the, in the West, in Nigeria basically, or probably most sites in Africa, I can't really say for all, but most sites in Africa here, yeah, when we see red, we think about danger, we think about stop. Um, but for, when you go to the Chinese area, I mean, when you go to Chinese, when they see red, they see, variety to see how you can basically we i wouldn't really say love per se but i can't really like say but variety like you can actually pay privilege to the set of people that you want to like because red basically stands for 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 higher power there in, the, in some place in china you know? so no you are designing for and you wouldn't want to go and design stuff for people in Chinese in color red, you will not expect them to be afraid or probably something that that just just know what you are designing for and like know your target audience and to definitely help you. And uh, yeah, find inspiration. I mean, there are lots of places you can definitely get inspiration from, and this inspiration. Uh, uh, a whole lot. You can use dribble, you can use beyond, even images. Uh, I mean, there is this particular, there's this particular, but she be on more, yeah, she be on more. He did a particular play, I guess it was last year or early last year, whereby it gets people images and derive colors out of those images. I mean, as a product designer or as a brand designer or any kind of designer you are, like you're expected to think very wide. Like you can just take a random picture and you just like the color palettes that picture generates. Like you just get wow, like wow. And you can just use those colors to create beautiful interfaces for users to actually use. I mean, you can do that. And one thing I'll actually say is use Dribble. Like there are a lot of UI there, a lot of guides to actually direct you in terms of how to use color. It even helps you define hierarchy. Sometimes, like this is what I do when I was starting out as a designer. Color was very, very confusing for me. And so I just go around to Drake and like look at how people define their color style and just play around with it. I definitely know that, yes, this is, we can't, we can't use black for subtext or we can't use black for, for body. Then we definitely use black for heading and we definitely use subtext. Like you like that gray and all, all this stuff. You just get to see how people structure it on, on Dribble, and it's it's something that is very inspiring, and you can actually go very wide in it. Same thing with the hands and, and many other. More. Just to be sure, I don't know whether I can see him, Tiwa. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So sorry that I can I'm kind of sharing my screen, so I don't I don't want to go there. So. Yeah, so you can check out this website. So, yeah, colors, colors, the cool, colors, I'd be right there, sorry. So, these are like this website whereby auto generated temp templates, rather, color palettes are actually created for you. So, you can just pick out of them. Like I said, you must actually know who you are designing for, and you don't want to get this pick a color, just imagine you are designing for a, a hospital now, and you are going to pick probably like green or something. Yeah, green might work basically, work, but I don't think it will really define what you want to actually portray to your people or your users. And we all know that green stands for natural. So anything natural, you're thinking about 
agricultural, ag agrotech or stuff like that, basically. So we should just make sure your, your inspiration are you for, your inspiration you got are uh, defined by what you actually understood from your targeted users and all. So establish a color system or uh, keep it keep it simple. Okay, I guess it's called keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> but yeah, we'll really keep it simple. And when I mean keep it simple, I mean you don't really have to start. Yeah, I know yeah. They roll lots in design system and color systems. You don't really have to like start like very, very big in everything you do. You might just have like two colors and you might just have like your whites and your gray and, and your, your, your error color and your success color and the rest. Just start like that and on, with that you keep on building stuff. So those are like the easiest way to actually go on your color system uh, like like i said this is how i go about it's like this trick has actually helped me you have a background color probably your background color is white and your primary color is purple or purple, and your secondary color is like let us say like black or basically and we have an error we know error should be red and we have a success to be green so just basically define all this stuff on your own end and uh, just like have it well structured and uh, it will just help you in terms of making things much more easier and faster for you to do and uh, you don't have to go boom 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 in terms of rushing through i know you get to see like a lot of a lot of palettes in terms of how they are structured in terms of one from from the saturation to another reduce lightness and you get to reduce and all so yeah, basically you don't have to like rush to do this. Color palettes, then yeah, the color palette is ready. I mean, this is really bad. <laughs> Actually, very bad. But yeah, the color palette is ready. I don't like I don't like using the spelling because I love the spelling. So that's why I'm using it. So but your color palette is ready regardless. And that's after you define all this, you ask yourself question, you found inspiration, establish a color system. And these are like just the ways to step in how to create like a, a mini color system. You know, remember like what I said, you don't have to like start very, very big. You just have to you just have to have it in a way whereby it's okay for you and it's okay for your targeted users. So these are like the things to look out for when you have a color palette and all. Make sure your colors are accessible and all. So I'll still walk you guys through some this particular tool that I use basically. And all. In fact, let me just even walk you guys through it now. So, but yeah, make sure you use, make sure your colors are accessible. Use contrast color to check. So contrast color is basically a tool that just helps you tell probably whether your, your color is basically accessible. And to basically help you in defining layouts, like high fidelity design um, to help you. So let me just show you color contracts. So, so this, this is like a background of, so if you get to see it, so this is a website. If you can just type on Google contrast checker basically. So it helps you and all. Uh, so let us just basically refresh this and see how it goes. So we have like this color here. This is blue and white. So we can see it has like a normal text pass, pass. It shows like on bold. And this one just shows like an input field and all. So let us try out. So we try out two different colors. So let us use probably this color green and let us use red. Let us see. So looking at this, it's telling you that yes, so all the stuff are basically failed because you can literally see that this doesn't work out well. I know. So you don't want to. Once you have your color system defined and 
you want to really test it out, like having like some background, probably is a button you can just create and just test run it basically with contrast checker. It will really truly help you in terms of how we define color, right? So let us try another kind of color. Let us use yellow. Or uh, I like this yellow. So okay. Yes, so this yellow and black basically work. And this is something that for your four color, your background color is black. Yes, this is very visible. This is very accessible. You don't you don't want to always you don't want to design a, a, a product whereby your users can't even know that this is a this is a button to click on. And that was what color check contrast checker will help you to do basically. So Please let us take note of that, yeah. And make sure the colors address what the brand does. Like I said earlier when we start, like you already defined your audience, you already know who you are designing for. And yes, making sure all this align the brand, what the brand does. If you are designing for a FinTech, make sure yes, your color is in line to FinTech. And if you are designed for hospital, make sure your color is aligned to hospital. And also, if you are designed for, for agri-tech, like I said, natural. When you think about natural stuff, you think about green, think about stuff like that. Just make sure this is aligned to what your brand does. Make sure your color have visual impact. Hmm. So I know there are some points you, you might not necessarily know, but there are people that define color system without having like the error states and success states and the information state and like all these basic states basically have an effect in your color palette. So it's very, very nice of you to always have them and keep them in mind and always make sure, yes, you are putting this in the face of your in face of your stakeholders and all. So yeah, that is about color palettes. Color is inspiration and hydration. Hmm, double N. Sorry, that was my bad. <laughs> but yeah, this was a quote I got on Jump. Yeah, so this is like it's inspiration and it's an iterative process. You just always know that you can't be a master once when you're starting out with color. Just, it takes time and it takes experiments. You need to test out things. There are lots of beautiful pictures out there and you can just derive your color palette from them and use it to create an interface, I know. So that's one thing you should have in mind. And one thing I would like to say, if, if whatever you're designing, yeah, whatever you are designing with color, before you start define, putting color into any of your layouts, speaking from a product design perspective, try to make sure you must have, have like a defined layout, a well-structured layout first. So probably it might be low fidelity or it might be sketches on your paper, but make sure you have like a well-defined layout and know that this is where the button should be positioned, this is where the menu should be positioned, and all the stuff like that will just help you in terms of how you portray your stuff and all. So yeah, let us practice. Ah, this is very bad, okay. This color contrast, basic, uh, the contrast checker will just ring a bell. So yeah, you are wrong. It's telling me that I'm wrong. I basically know that that is wrong, Shall but let us move. <laughs> now, let us practice. So let's go to the practice section. It's not really take time, it's just something that I just, I just did. I know it might not really be deep because of time, but I just make, I'm just to be sure that you, you put this in mind, like all what I've been saying. I know let's not just be theory based. Again, all the, what I'm saying, let us just put this in mind and like actually put into practicalization and all. So just to be sure again, think I Hear me? Yes, Hello? yes, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, so 
what to practice on then so by the way i love the, the new figma dark mode it's really beautiful and it gives me so much joy so i don't know so this is like a low fidelity of God. one product i worked on sha but it's just more like a random login screen that shows you everything uh yeah i've defined my color already uh like I already know what the color is basically going to look like and all. So these are like the color. And one thing I would like to address to people is on Figma, you can actually do a lot of things that will make your life easier. So adding this color to your to your to you to as a component basically will help you move faster in anything you do. And so let us have it here. So we add style and have this, create a new color style. It's clearly meaning it's up. So, and be very careful in terms of how you name your color style, because it's very ideal to have like a standard way in where you name it and all. So we can have this primary, primary blue, up primary blue. So you might want to like, over here, so a primary blue. So I don't, I really try, I don't want this to be my secondary. So but my black is my secondary color, shall but let's just have this as as a as a a gray. Gray one because it helps you to just know everything well. And this other one, what I'm basically doing this is just to help guide in terms of how you define your colors because it will literally help you. So let me just move faster, not to waste time. Up, upgrade two. So, yeah. Have three. So we have this upgrade four. All right, then we have our up white. So up white. Like I said, you might put you might put up black ball. Let's just put up black ball. I actually want it to be like my color. Like I said again. Always have like a aerostate color. I know there's like this, there's another one which is success, but I did not add it yet. But just bear in mind that when you're defining your color system, just have in mind you have those two at least your aerostate and your success state. Um, so now looking at this, your cost, your color styles are clearly defined and yeah this is what figma does and makes life easier for you so one thing i would love to do now is to convert this particular thing to this particular interface to a high fidelity so like i said from the side we already have a background but i don't like this background i want to use another background and I want to use this part as my background app upgrade four as my background then let's change this background too so this is what it does and then i don't like this border so remember this is like a high fid low fidelity rather than it just does really tell about the design and all. So looking at this interface here, let me remove the rulers because it's a real pain. Yeah, so looking at this interface, it's just, it just plain because it's just no fidelity and all. And it doesn't really define anything. And colors just helps you to, like I said, draws your attention to everything you do. And you want a situation whereby attention are being drawn to here and all so have this yeah 
you already have a, a black yeah then do you want to create an account while well, we have it like our black too but well, want the situation whereby this gets started should be we want the situation whereby this gets you should be called to action or no so yeah so we want the situation whereby this gets started should be called to action and we want our our label to have a different color let's give it our upgrade one and we have like a border color so it depends on how you want to name it as well so you might decide to want to give it another color but making sure like the colors are visible and people should actually see it and all that really matters as well so we'll give it the the upgrade four or rather let us give it this upgrade three so moving faster so then we give it like this as well then we get to like like this this is 100 pass through so you might have a 100 but sometimes you can just have it 40 because you just want people to like have it less and feel like this is a placeholder to have that feel of it i know so you want people to get their attention drawn to this forgot password so you might want to give it this and you might want to give it like I said, follow your, your color style already. Uh, it just helps things consistent for you. And have it like a gray. Yes, then have our, our colors. Then we have our button. Yeah, so this basically just, there are different kinds of buttons. You have like your disabled over state we have focus we have different state of buttons but i'll just be defining just two states at this because of this class basically so it will help you to just understand some things and later on you can just read more about it so i'll just define the disabled states we already know that we have our our app blue yes but remember, user hasn't inputted anything, so this should be disabled. So one trick I do, so it works different, differently for people, so, but this is just my own opinion, and I, it has been working for me as well. So one thing I do, I just reduce the opacity so, to 50%, and this just makes it look disabled. And user gets to like see that, yes, so, once they enter here, they can't basically do anything. Or we can even make it more or less. If I do like 30, it will look more disabled than all. So then let's go to our states, our active states, yeah, whereby users are get everything. So let's give it our blog. Like I said, it was passed through the have 100. password, let's just use star. Uh, So we have this. So this is eye open. That means that you should be seen. So let us have a password like one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three, Ajayi. So the same basically, and then we have our password now we change it to to normally 100 so yeah so this is like how we move so let me just make it closer to to everybody to so just so this is how we move from here to this place to this place so these are like how just basic stuff on how to like Define implement color style guide to to a low fidelity design. And one thing I would like to say about this is there's a whole lot like there's a whole lot of I can be like a high low fidelity dashboard whereby you get to do different 
implementing different design style guide on it. But this one just is just like a basic analog because of our time. I won't like be going deeper in that and all, but yes, this can this can actually serve as a guide and I hope it was really helpful. So yes, so let me just move on to my slide back to this. So then we are done practicing. So now I don't know if anybody has any question that they might like to ask. Because I believe that, yeah, questions that you like to ask. So then I will, then I will just hand off them. So, hi, Tiwa. Hi, Victor. Yeah, so over to you. So, we have one question here in the chat. It says, Can success color be another color aside green? So I didn't get that. The question says, can success color be another color aside green? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, it could be, but it depends on the scenario and depends on what you are trying to do for. Or you, you can't, I can't basically say that success color must be green. There are some times success color might be black. I know, but as long as it's passing the message and more familiar with it. It doesn't have to be green at all time. But yeah, but green is mostly familiar with what people use and it's advisable you use green. So yeah, that's that. All right, next question says, can your primary, co primary color be your background color? Eh, uh, I don't think so. I don't know. Your primary color is mostly when you use for your call to action, when you're about to take like a call to action to a particular thing. Having your primary color as your background color might make your interface in a messy way. I haven't really done it, I haven't tried it actually, but really, primary colors are, are specific to call to action CTAs. And I, I was looking at the one thing that Airbnb did. They have like a primary color and a secondary color, but their primary color just pops up to the user face, like book an apartment, book an apartment, just like it's all in the face and also. I don't think that would work with your primary color. Yeah, I don't know. It wouldn't work. I don't think so. Yeah. All right, thanks. And the next question says, please, can you show an example of how to use the color con contrast plugin on Figma? Um, color contrast, uh, I'm not, okay, I will say I'm not, I haven't used that before, or I don't know, probably I can share it, probably once I've learned it through, I can like share it on Twitter or something, but I haven't actually used it before, so I can't really tell. All right. Um, if you want to, you know, see the recording of, you know, how to use the plugin, you can follow Victor on his socials. I'll be posting the link in the chat. Um, another question is, what are maximum colors you use in projects? What are the maximum colors? Like maximum amount of colors you use in the project? And that was, that was an interesting question. One thing I would like to say, like, there's no maximum, there's no minimum. At all. But yeah, there should be there's minimum words because you must have like some standard colors defined well and all. But I wouldn't say like there is a maximum basically. That's the word. Having your color palette, like I said when I was thinking back, like I was talking about you might just have like a background, you might have like a primary color and your secondary color, then you might not have like your error state and success state like these are like just stuff that you should just define basically and from those color then you get to generate other colors which i made mention you have like your disabled color you have like your focus state color you have like your overstate color these are like different shades of color so but they might be they, they are not like they, i wouldn't say they are maximum but they, they definitely mean more so yeah all right. Just um, keep it. Just keep it simple. Exactly. Yeah. 
All right, thank you. This is a personal question. Most times when I create like color systems, I add secondary colors, right? But I never use them because I really don't know where to use them. So where do you use secondary colors in your design? Okay, so let me just sum this off for you. Like, secondary colors are used when, you know, we know primary color basically are used for the city. And secondary colors are like the, the secondary option you want the user to pick in that option. Um, take, for example, you are designing like a, what in which example should I use? Okay, you are designing like a checkout flow and you want to know your primary color is basically blue. And probably second, secondary color can be like save, save order for next time. So these are like where you get to use your secondary color. It might work in different ways, but yes, those are like for me personally, that's what I use. And I use this for like actions that are basically secondary to what I want to design for. So yeah. All right, thank you. Um, if you have any questions, you can unmute. We will give you a minute for that. So you can just unmute and quickly ask your question. If you have questions, contributions, you might want to add stuff like that, please feel free to, to share because everybody's learning. I want to learn from you guys as well. So please, yeah. All right. So Hi, Tiwa. Yeah, a question dropped in the chat. It says, okay. what about a situation where the primary colors are two? How do you use them in your design? Did you get me? Um, yeah, a situation where your primary colors are two. Yes, how do you use them in your design? Primary colors, that's why it's called primary. I think you should only be one. I don't think I'll be having to. So some, but sometimes, yeah. But sometimes, yeah, they can be two as well. But it, it varies or is really. Well, how you use them, you define it. How you use them, your design rather is what you actually want the user to actually pay more focus on. Like I was taking, for example, the checkout soon that I said to have like those two stuff there and you want your users to actually take a major action and all but at most times yeah i think primary color should just be one you know, just just speaking from what i know but it might be true like yeah most times the yeah, primary color might be true i can't really see for now but me working personally i don't think i've had that experience where i get to struggle with two primary colors I know. So yeah, that's just what I have to say about that. All right, another question says, do you have best practices for applying colors in landing pages? Sorry, what? Do you have best practices for applying colors in landing pages? Do I have best practices? Yes. Yeah, like tips oh. that you can give us and stuff. Oh, I, I don't, okay, probably I, I don't think I could share that now because I don't like do like a low fidelity for a landing page and all. But one thing I would just like to say in terms of tip pages is make sure you, your call to action is visible and make sure hierarchy is well defined when i mean hierarchy is well defined you have your big text you have your, your smaller sub body text you know that it, for head for example one save one life that's your heading so in the other smaller text i'll right, say that saving life will help you get your money back stuff like that so your heading might be like in a black format or probably this the body might be like in a gray format. So and there might be actions 
button that says download this app or something or create an account or something. So these are just like things like define your heading and define your you know, body in terms of colors. And colors are basically just colors just helps you define hierarchy as well. So when you are designing for landing pages, think about hierarchy. Think about what comes to your user attention first. What do you want the user to actually see first before any other thing? And I believe that that could help. That that, should, that definitely help. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, we'll be taking our last set of questions. Um, and you're like three, okay. So um, the first one says, how do you handle a situation where the brand's color is red? I personally have this issue at the moment. <laughs> So how do you handle that? Yeah. So funny enough, yeah, I'm actually working on a project. Sadly. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Sorry enough, yeah. I'm currently working on a project that the brand color is actually red as well. <laughs> so, but red, basically, we all know in Nigeria that red deals with, deals with danger and all. And one thing I would just like to say about that is just, <laughs> just go with it because you because of your 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 instinct, because of your experience, just try to like put put a lot of a lot of mixture of black and green and a red. A red should just be like stuff that deals with call to action and all. So that will just help you streamlessly. Those red should just be like a pointer, like that shows like yes, this is a sign up button, like that should be red. Like you want your users to actually type on this, like yes, this should be red and all. And you just play along with that. But like I said, mix with a lot of gray, a lot of black and white as well. So this will just help you define hierarchy, define your border basically well and to make your design look very minimal and sweet. So yeah, so that's that's the advice I do because basically that's what I'm doing. All right, thanks for that. Um, next one says, please, what is the best practice for color contrast in typography? Like I learned title and body do not need to have the same color. Do they necessarily have to be entirely different colors or what? Uh, okay, well, I'll answer this question in two ways. So first of all, in terms of typography, you are looking at a situation whereby, where I, where do you want your users to pay attention to first? You have like a heading, you have a body. Like I said, the heading that says, one saving, save life. And the text that says, saving life doesn't really I've been saving life with money matters as well. Sorry about that, uh, that example. But yeah, the heading should be, you don't necessarily have to change color sometimes, but sometimes as well, you need to change color, but you just have to like pay attention to what your user, what do you want your user to actually see first. And race situation where you get to change color, make, make sure like you like that color of that particular heading you are changing. And situation where you are not changing colors, make sure that probably you have like the text are basically might not necessarily won't be might not necessarily be bigger than the other one, might just be of the same color, but the same size, but probably the weight will just change and all. So it will know that yes, this sounds like a heading, this one sounds as a body. So these are like some kind of trick you use to just find your way around this particular stuff. So yeah. All right. So the last question for tonight is: um, Must all design projects have ascent colors, and how does one know the shades of a particular color to work with? Did you get? Yeah. Them? All what can I say is though. Uh, yeah, I get you. Like, if I get, let me just repeat the question. You were asking if all color, des all design of the color system should have like an asset color. Yeah. And yes. And what color of shape you should use at all? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just refer back. 
yeah, if you have, because you want a situation where you don't want a situation whereby people can differentiate between errors and success in your design, or probably the distinguish between information, something that is a call to action and all in your designs. And this will actually not make your design look look sweet really. Yeah. But like I said, keep it simple. Keep it simple and in terms of usage of colors, uh, in terms of usage of color, you already know what you actually have in mind. Like you already know this is what my design should look like. You already defined a proper layout for yourself already. Uh, one thing I'll say about this is heading headings most times have a different color and the body has like a different color. Most times body has a lighter and sometimes heading has a, a, a darker. So just 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 turn around there and you'll definitely find a way around it. So yeah. Thank you so much, Victor. This was really nice. Thank you so much for um being here. We'll hit you up sometime during the week for the slides so we can post it. And we also have the recording up on our YouTube channel sometime during the week also. Thank you guys for joining. Um, Design with EU socials are in the chat. Victor's socials too are in the chat. You can go there and you know follow us on social media. Thank you guys. Have a nice night. Bye. <laughs>